Good morning and welcome to the chair. My name is Amy Bauman. I'm with For His Glory Ministry, and this is our weekly teaching. We come together each week, figure out what chair we're sitting in, look at God's Word, apply it to our lives, hopefully becoming more encouraged and more like Jesus. But if this is your first time joining us today, I'm so glad that you found us online, and I pray that today will be a blessing. Now, the countdown is on. We're about two weeks away from Thanksgiving, and the Lord gave me uh, a couple of topics to talk about over the next couple of weeks uh, to look at some hard truths. Not everybody loves the holidays. Not everybody loves Thanksgiving. And there's lots of reasons for that. And we're going to look at that over the next couple of weeks uh, just to make sure that our hearts are right. And maybe there are some ways that we can move through this season, right, in a God-honoring way, aligned with God's Word, and that we can truly have joy, joy in each step of the way. So we're going to look at that today. Tis the season. Happy stress giving. We really want to eliminate that stress and we want to get into the holidays with a really good heart. So we're going to talk about that today, but before we get started, let's open with prayer. Father God, I thank you for your heart. I thank you for how much you love us. I thank you that your, your desire is, is for us to have joy-filled lives when we remain in you. Uh, and Lord, in the brokenness of this world and the struggles and the tragedies and the loss and in all of the things that we see today, holidays can be challenging. And so I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you will open up our hearts and our ears for what we're going to talk about today, that we can have a, a new way of looking at things, a new way of celebrating, and that we can walk this out in, our, in each of our own journeys, Lord, walking with you. I pray for a fresh anointing that I will speak your truth with love and I thank you for everything that you are going to do. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So Thanksgiving is probably one of my favorite holidays. I love to feed people and whether that's in the ministry or if that's at my house, I, I love to prepare a food. I love to sit down with my family and I love to eat. And that's not always been that way. I mean, um, there was a few years in there where we got to this time of year and some things had happened and it was hard it kind of stole a bit of my joy from Thanksgiving and cooking and family. And I focused on these things. Now, mom, I know you're watching today and I know I'm okay to share this story, but back several years ago, my mom and I had a falling out. We had a, a fight. It was really bad communication on both of our parts and we parted and did not talk for a couple of years. And my mom was a very intricate part of my Thanksgiving. You know, she's the one that wrote out the recipe card and told me how to make a turkey. And I'd pull that card out every year and I could talk to her on the phone. And I'm like, you know, I think I got everything out. And th there were times I hadn't removed everything and we found the bag later. But that whole process of talking to my mom when she was living in um, out of state and looking at her card and cooking the turkey was it was a whole thing and when we had our falling out and we weren't communicating i would pull that card out and i would get i would get so sad because she wasn't in my life during the season and i couldn't talk to her and um, i had felt bad about things I had said and and so I started uh, taking a picture of that card and sending it off to her and saying thinking about you today happy Thanksgiving sometimes we don't have someone that we can send that text message to we've either had someone pass away or it's a completely broken relationship 
and we're going through the motions for the holidays, specifically Thanksgiving, and it is hard. Maybe we have lost some of our family members and we're alone. Maybe um, we get to this time of year and there's so much to do, you know, the cooking and the travel and um, getting everything around. And man, the kids are home and I'm trying to find sitter because I'm supposed to work and I'm supposed to cook. And, you know, we get to this time of year and it's more stressful than anything else. And, and so we're bumping along every day and we're not finding ourselves thankful. We're not finding ourselves grateful. We're finding ourselves stressed. And so I wanted to talk about that today uh, to look at some things that we can do when we get to this time of year and we know it's coming instead of bumping along and just plowing through it and not caring who gets hurt on the way through, maybe this year we can be intentional. Maybe this year we can take a step back and take a few minutes and go, okay, I know Uncle Bob is going to talk about politics. I know my sister Karen is going to show me the pictures of all of her family and how good everybody looks and all the things that they bought. I know that you know, brother Ben is going to do X, Y, and Z. And I know how all of that makes me feel every year, but what am I going to do differently this year? How am I going to get through it? How am I going to love them in this moment and be grateful for this time and grateful for them? How am I going to shine light and show Jesus? Well, I want us to, if you have your Bibles, I want to look at Luke 6, uh, specifically, I think I have the right thing. Yes, yeah, sorry. Luke 6, I want to look at verse 27, and I want to read through 36. Now, it says, love for enemies. Are all of these people enemies? Not necessarily. They're your family, um, but... Maybe you get to this time of year and some fights break out. Maybe you, you get through Thanksgiving and then you unfriend yourselves on Facebook because you had a really per terrible day. I don't know, but I want to look at what this says about here, what these red letters are calling us to on, on how to act and how to love through difficult things, difficult people, difficult seasons. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked, but merciful just as your Father is merciful." Maybe this doesn't truly apply to your specific situation, but ultimately what Jesus is calling us to is love. Bottom line, love. And sometimes the things that we have in our heart, the emotions, um, the anxiousness, the thoughts that we think about family and friends is just as bad as having them be called your enemy 
because you're thinking these negative things and thinking, I don't want to talk to them about politics and I don't want to see her list of pictures one more time and I don't want to talk to this person, you know, and there could be a fight and there might be too much alcohol. I mean, you could unpack it all of, all of those things, but at the end of the day, what is the shape of your heart? What is the shape of your heart as you are interacting with people um, that may not always bring out the best in you? I want to look at that one thing specifically. So first of all, now that we know this, right? And, and Jesus is saying to bless those and love them and forgive them and pray for them and all of those things. You alone know what your Thanksgiving day is going to look like when you walk into that, that family get together. So how can you prepare your heart and how can you show love and light to those people that you're going to be involved with? Um, maybe if you do not want to talk politics with Uncle Bob, right, then maybe you need to have an escape plan. Maybe you need to tell your spouse or whatnot um, to call. Or maybe you need to say, oh, Uncle Bob, I got to go help Aunt Marge in the kitchen. I mean, don't allow yourself to get brought into that where there could be harsh words said and anger and all of that. And, and you're going to go down a road that you don't like. Maybe ask the Lord to give you a heart that you could sit through your sister's pictures and what she's telling you and ask the Lord to bless her and bless you in the process, right? To show love, to, to do something that would make her happy also. We have people in our lives that sometimes know exactly what buttons to push. And if you add a turkey and a big group gathering and, and maybe some wine, uh, sometimes it doesn't go the way that we want it to. Know that in advance. Uh, refrain from, from things. Think about some kind words that you can say up front. Think about some ways that you can show love to those people that you're going to spend the holidays with. And if you are going through this alone this season, if you're missing a loved one, if you're missing that person, whether that's a, a death or a divorce, or maybe that person um, is, is no longer you're in a relationship with, know that when you get to that day, it's going to be a little bit challenging and give yourself some grace. Maybe set aside a little time to honor them. Maybe spend some time thinking about uh, those memories. Maybe if that person is no longer in your life because of a falling out, maybe send them a text and tell them that you're thinking about them just like I did with my mom. And let me just tell you, right, the prayers that were offered up during those couple of Thanksgiving seasons, those holidays when we were not together, those texts that I sent her telling her that I loved her, telling her uh, that I was thinking about her, those were um, texts that were starting to be seeds planted for a restored relationship. Each of us forgiving each other in our own hearts was preparing a way for God to work and move. Letting go of that conflict and that argument and um, inviting the Lord to come in and work and move in this situation allowed us to have a restored relationship and be closer today than we've ever been before. We need to be intentional about how we're living our lives. We need to be intentional about these um, events, these holidays, these things that we go through. We need to recognize that Man, for the last five years, it's been a tr struggle on Thanksgiving. Do I want to do that again? Create some, some things in there, some measures, some things that you can do that will help you 
have a really wonderful Thanksgiving and to show the light and love of Jesus um, to all those that you're around this year, right? When it matters the most. And when we look at uh, these verses, he's calling us to stand out. He's calling us to be different. He's saying, listen, even the people that don't know me do these things. I'm calling you, I'm setting you apart to do it differently. I'm calling you to love. I'm calling you to love even your enemies. I'm calling you to pray for them and bless them because that's planting seeds of how I can work and move in their lives. We need to take a step back and look down at um, these situations, these opportunities that we're going through and knowing that we only have so much more time left before Jesus returns for these people to have an opportunity to really truly experience the love of Jesus and why Jesus followers are different. What makes us different? And trust me, I know we can get to these times of years, these holidays and seasons, and they can be stressful. I'm just encouraging you today that because we know it's coming, what can we do different this year? Two weeks out, what can we do different this year to invite Jesus in? Invite Jesus in to work and move in our hearts and for us to be prepared that even though this is the season, we can show people love. We can love them right where they are. And in, in turn, we can have a wonderful, thankful, grateful Thanksgiving. I know it's hard. I've been there. But I'm telling you today, I want to encourage you that Jesus is the reason we can do this. And because of his love and his grace uh, that lives in us, we can offer that same thing to other people. We can shine brightly for him. Amen? Let's pray. Father God, you know that this is a challenging time in our world. You know that we have strapped finances. You know that there are hot topics that are hard to discuss. And you know when you can put people together that haven't seen each other for very often and you add all of those things that it can be combustible. And, and there can be hurt feelings and there can be blow ups and there can be issues. And I just pray, Lord, that this season is different. I pray that all of us will be aware and go into this holiday season with love. We will have some backup plans. We will have some words, kind words to say. We will have spent some time in prayer preparing our hearts for us to shine brightly for you. And I just pray, Lord, for all of those people that are struggling right now. I pray for all of the stressors, all of the things, the things, the, the lost relationships, the sadness, the, where they're at right now. And I pray that you will meet them right where they are and let them know how much you love them. I pray that you will create opportunities for us to shine brightly for you, even amongst the stressful things, even amongst this challenging season and that we will have joy. We love you and praise you and thank you and ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You're not going to want to miss next week. Part two of Tis the Season is talking about the side of addiction. Uh, when we can get to these situations and these parties and there's alcohol and there's things, what can we do to stay committed to our sober journey and, and what that looks like for you? So you're not going to want to miss it. But thanks so much for being here today and for joining us. And until next time, until we can be together again, be blessed.